Hi, I'm Kathy Thomas, and I'm with the executive chef of Watermark and three other very successful restaurants in Orange County, Mark Cohen. And I'm crazy about your goat cheese appetizers. It's a great appetizer and one that I love to do with my family at home. So first we're going to start off with our apples. We're going to go ahead and slice the apples to about a quarter inch thickness. And I like it that you're leaving the skin on, Chef. It's got a lot more flavor and a lot of nutrients that a lot of people didn't really realize, I think, until recently that it's worth having. And we're going to cut this into a julienne. We're going to go ahead and make that into a fine dice. And then with apples, you want to work semi-quickly, of course, because you don't want them to brown on you. So we have some apples that you see that we've diced up for you already. The first thing we're going to do is add a little bit of fresh lime juice. Right. Which will just add more perkiness. Absolutely, and a little bit of acidity really gives it a nice flavor. So we're going to do a little lemon juice as well. And to that, we actually have a little bit of Sprite or 7-Up. Which I think is so interesting. It's the carbonation that really makes the difference. A little bit of that light carbonation keeps the apples really crisp and nice. Mm. We're going to finish it off. We're going to add a little bit of clove or honey, just lightly drizzled over the top and give it a light stir. And then our apples are ready. Easy so far. So on to how to make goat cheese into little perfect spheres. All right, we're going to put a little bit of flour on our hands, which will make it a little easier to roll. And then we're going to roll our, our spheres. And this is about a half an ounce of goat cheese that I'm rolling. And what temperature do you want that goat cheese? You're gonna to wanna to have the goat cheese just lightly at room temperature, but if it's too cold, what'll happen is that the goat cheese will separate and it'll become uh -huh. crumbly and won't work. And we're gonna place them in the refrigerator for approximately 30 to 40 minutes. All right, they're chilled up. They're chilled and ready to go. So what we've done is we've taken our chilled goat cheese and we put it back in our seasoned flour. And we're just gonna lightly toss those a little bit in our seasoned flour so they have a nice even coating. Mm -hmm. You have to be very careful here because you wanna make sure that the goat cheese is not gonna come out of the shell. And we're gonna go ahead and place a couple of our goat cheese balls into our buttermilk. And then we're gonna place that back into our seasoned flour. So then we have our fryer going over here. Our oil is at approximately 375 degrees. We're gonna be very gentle as we don't wanna hurt the goat cheese. Lightly golden brown is perfect. And then we're ready to plate. All right. I wanna it, eat. They're just gorgeous. I can oh, hardly wait. Thank you. We're gonna place about a quarter teaspoon into the center. And then we have our lovely goat cheese. And we have our clover honey. Mm -hmm. We're gonna go ahead and give that a nice light drizzle. Micro Dijon is of the mustard plant, mm -hmm. and it has a little bit of that peppery flavor, almost like arugula. Chef, I really appreciate your generosity in sharing this recipe with me, because I'm going to be making these all the time. As long as you invite me over when you do. That sounds good to me. It's a deal. And now a quick tip from Melissa's. How about some beautiful baked apples in the slow cooker? It's one of my favorite breakfast things. And you want to start by partially coring the apple using a melon baller. And you see how I started to just push that melon baller in? And so we're going to go about 3 quarters of the way down, but it's still intact at the bottom. So I have a simple mixture here of brown sugar, cinnamon, dried fruit. Oh, I like to use cranberries or cherries, currants, raisins. Delicious. So I'm going to take off just a little bit of the peel at the top, and then I just spoon in that brown sugar mixture and put a little pat of butter atop each apple. So once you have all your apples in here, you just put in about a half a cup of apple juice, that goes in the slow cooker for four hours, set on low. And this is the kind of slow cooker that shifts to warm. So you can do that before you go to bed at night. And it'll be ready in the morning. The fruit and vegetable aisles are filled with so much potential. Try something new. Have an adventure.